Moral Maze, a weekly segment where we explore issues of life, sexuality, morality from a, well, a contrarian standpoint, I suppose. In other words, we give you a view the media party will not. Matt Wojciechowski joins us from Campaign Life Coalition, just telling me that uh, two-year-old not sleeping, another baby on the way, so we'll be gentle with you. <laughs> Thanks, <Michael. laughs> Sleep Appreciate deprivation. Uh, the Gates Foundation, let's see a, a clip, an informing clip, please. The simple fact is that some women can determine their own destiny, while others cannot. My mother always wanted to study, but she couldn't because she had to pursue the family. It was six of us. She had one child every year. This was something which she never wanted. Hmm. Now, this is very interesting because the, the Gates Foundation announced, or there was an announcement that they, they were no longer funding abortion. But trying to read between the lines, I don't know if that's true or not. No, I don't think it's true at all. I mean, uh, they've, Melinda Gates has always said, I mean, she's always kind of, the abortion issue has been controversial to her. Hmm. Even though they've been pumping Planned Parenthood with millions and millions and millions of dollars yeah, I mean, every huge year. amounts of money. And uh, I guess uh, when she was here for the Maternal Newborn and Child Health Summit in Toronto a few weeks ago, a lot of the journalists from mainstream media were asking about abortion. Yeah. And I guess she realized that, wow, I've got to step back. This issue in Canada, it's very polarizing, and it's polarizing around the world, so mm -hmm. we're not going to fund abortions. I don't believe her because if you look at the record, I mean, in the past four years, the Melinda Gates Foundation, uh, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, has donated uh, over $70 million to International Planned Parenthood Federation. Mm. And their main job is to spread abortion on demand in conservative countries, break down laws in conservative countries, yeah. and, and obviously commit the abortions as well in, in private clinics. Yeah. I mean, it has to be said that the Gates Foundation also gives... And we're talking serious money, huge amounts of money, to very good causes too. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't deny that. I mean, the vaccinations, the nutrition, the, you know, the basic healthcare needs of women and children around the mm. world, uh, totally agree with them on that one. However, if she's going to say publicly that she no longer funds abortion, I mean, you know, cut your ties with Planned Parenthood and then maybe I will believe you. Yeah, and the way mainstream media ran with this, as though it was an established truth, and what we just saw, I mean, India for example, I mean, I, I know the situation relatively well, and India has been, there are many problems still with 1.2 billion people, but it's the largest, most rapidly growing middle class in the history of humanity. They're, they're, yeah. they're achieving so much because they liberated the economy. Instead of pursuing the socialist policies of Mrs. Gandhi, they suddenly realized that a, a controlled free market was the way forward, and, and, and it's working. Wealth is being created. So it's, it's not population control, which is a misnomer. It's actually being able to, to feed and, and to give work, employ and educate the people you, you have. Exactly. And I mean, you know, she says that she cares about, uh, and I'm sure she does, she wants to eradicate poverty. However, by pledging $4 billion to sterilize Africa, I don't really think that's going to be eradicated. That's poverty. particularly hideous because Africa is underpopulated, if anything. I mean, we could argue a lot of people in India, a lot of people in China. I don't think that's an issue in terms of feeding. But in Africa, Africa could feed itself hundreds of times over. Yeah. Um, we have foreign intervention. We have wars being fought vicariously. We have exploitation. These are... I mean, I think I've said this before, Peru, which has trouble feeding its population, has one of the largest fish catches, if not the largest, in the entire world. A lot of that, I think most of it now, is exported to North America for cat food. Yeah. Well, I'm loath to sound like a left-winger here, but it's not <laughs> about population, it's about many other things. That's right. Let's talk about the, this, this young person, is it in Alberta, the transgendered issue? Because I mean, this is always a difficult one. I know there are people on the right who, who want us to scream and shout and call people names and everything. That's no solution to this. We have to be sensitive, but also we have to be realistic. Yes, when I, when I read this article, I, the, my first reaction was I was really sad, mm. uh, mainly because this, this is a child, 12 years old, uh, born uh, a girl, uh, wants to be a boy. Um, you know, it's... And, it's just a very sad situation for the family. You know, there's a lot of confusion. I heard some interviews with the parents. You know, they, they try to be supportive of this child of and their decisions, and I think every parent should be supportive. At the same time, I mean, if this child is saying that I feel like I'm a boy, therefore I'm a boy, it doesn't mean that everyone all of a sudden has to say, oh, he's a boy. we mm -hmm. got to do everything they're doing. And uh, what's more concerning with this is in Alberta, the law states that uh, you cannot change your birth certificate from mm -hmm. male to female or female to female unless you've had a surgery. Yeah. So the premier there said, you know what, I'm going to get rid of that surgery clause. And now if uh, as long as you have a note from the doctor or a, psych a psychology assessment, then you can change your gender. And I think that is very problematic, especially for children. They don't know what they want. He's 12 years old. How could you, 
you know, I don't want to use the word manipulate, but there is a, there's a sense of manipulation Look, here. I, I've said this before, and again, I'm not going to play into these left or right wing uh, comfortable holes that, that people seem to, to relish. I don't understand people, adults, who, who believe they're not of the gender they were born in. But I want to be sensitive and empathetic. I don't understand, but I want to understand if the best possible way. When it comes to a child, though, I mean, I've, I've, we've raised four children. There are children who want to be all sorts of things. They want to be superheroes. They think they're going to be great sports stars. Like, they, they are children. And, and this is too young. If 18 or 19, the same views apply, it's to be readdressed. But at 12 years old, the state has a responsibility to take care, to take charge of, to make sure that this, this child doesn't go wrong. And I think everyone would agree that, you know, we have laws uh, to vote. You need to be 18. To drink, you need to be 19. Mm. These kids are not mature enough to be able to decide these things, which might, in the end, you know, they may face severe consequences in their lifetime, especially with this kid who is already getting a hormonal treatment, I believe, because they're not old enough to get the surgery yet. So, I mean, health issues, what's going to happen with this child developmentally? I mean, how will this affect him uh, or her growing up? So it's very concerning. Right. Children of that age, they can't have certain surgeries to repair scars, for example, because they're still growing. They can't have surgery on their eyes, but it, it's, it's too early. I'm, I'm not giving some blanket solution. I'm just saying it's too early, and, and um, I believe it's a result of a certain fashion in psychology, and, and it worries me deeply. We've got other subjects. We didn't have time to get to them, but the, these two, I think, are, are important enough. Good luck with the, um, the babies. <laughs> uh, you. You're going to be fine, I'm sure of it. I'll be fine. I'll be okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Michael.